from the banks of the Allegheny, welcome to Film Bits, True Detective, Episode 7, Part 4. Hey everybody, when last we left off, we were getting, Marty and Russ were getting ready to uh, interview somebody they just sort of allude to. Let's pick it up right there. understand what this is about Thank you. we're private investigators hired to do uh, ancestral research mineral rights along the coast hmm. she does like the tunnels i never knew them tunnel people but i heard stories no thank you it's an unfortunate you ruse get to get in here to talk to this uh, lady and make her think that she might be getting possible. some money depends on what we find out mr lord you worked for Mr. Erath. Tuttle, 19 years, right? Yes, Erath, mm-hmm, and Shreveport. So you knew his son, Billy Lee, right? Mm-hmm. The cousin, Eddie. Bill Poise, mm-hmm. How never. What about extended family, cousins, you know, that might have been close to the boys? Those days, families were bigger. Oh, all sorts of brothers, cousins, kids just running around. Did uh, Sam Tuttle have uh, kids outside his marriage that you know about? <laughs> Don't you know it? <laughs> now, people kept their own back then. I mean, a, a man's house was his own. It's the same. He had lots of children, all types. He didn't like a woman. See, once she had it done to her, he didn't like him but that one time. Not after that. And I had all these kids running around. You remember one that maybe had scars all across the bottom of his face? Uh, I think that was Mr. Sam's grandchild. His daddy did that to him, that poor boy. I, I think that child was a, 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 a children's, a, what if he was a little boy, a children's. Or well, Mr. Sam's other family. Hmm. I shouldn't be talking to you about this. That's okay. Mr. Lord, could you have a look at something for me? Well, one thing. Just have a look, see if you recognize. So this lady who is um, seemingly like a domestic for the Tuttle family knows Carcosa. She sees the devil nets. You know Carcosa? And Russ pursues and says, what is it? She says, he who eats time and robes. And remember, it was Ledoux that says time is a flat circle. So... All this weird kind of mystery, again, going back to the Yellow King work uh, that I profiled at the end of Episode 5 or in Episode 5. But we now can see how far this Carcosa thing extended. Because if she knows about Carcosa, what did she know? And why didn't she tell somebody? Obviously, the power of her employer. But... Also, she says something about robes. So how much does she know? Does she just know that there's a ritual attached to Carcosa? Does she know the most horrible aspects of Carcosa? Um, but we see the spread based on how many people. Look at how many different and disparate people know about Carcosa, right? Uh, we have the guy in prison who Rust was interrogating and winds up dying, but he brings it up. Now we have this domestic worker 
who brings it up. How far spanning and reaching is this cult? Or do these crimes go? Let's pick it back up. Men of invisible voices. Mineral rights, my ass. What y'all doing? Rejoice. Death is not the end. Rejoice. You need to leave now. Death is not the end. You need to leave. You know, cook or son. You rejoice. Cook or son. Little head nod, Marty gets to pick this one up. <laughs> Rest of the family, they don't really talk to Auntie. She crazy. Dementia. She never had any kind of good life, but most days she can't even make sense. Yeah, she sure made sense to me. That should worry you, mister. I wonder if something helped Auntie's craziness. Sure, I'll bet old lady was wrong. About no what? That death not being the end of it. <laughs> Rust immediately starts contemplating the bigger metaphysical aspects of this. Did some backtracking on the Marie Fontenot stuff. Got some old sheets. Sheriff signed off on the report made in error. But he didn't take the original complaint on her. Deputy did. Got a name? You ain't gonna believe this shit. Steve Geraci. So I did some double checking. For CID, he was with Vermillion Parish Sheriffs. Erath was his beat. If it got covered up, Steve might know something. Didn't say a fucking word when we asked about it in 95. I never did like that cocksucker. <laughs> Where is he now? Well, uh, this is the thing. He's from Iberia originally. After we'll talk CID, about him in a second. he went home. He's sheriff of Iberia Parish. Shit. Yeah. Russ, the only person can arrest a sheriff in this state is the governor. Well, we ain't looking to arrest him, Marty. Just having a little chat. I ain't gotta talk with you. I got a car battery and two jumper cables argue different. You can start with that shit. What do you recommend, Marty? Well, fuck, why don't you talk to him? You two always liked each other. Well, can I say I'm a people person? We'll start with that then. Okay, so Geraci is the guy early on when they are first working the ERAF case that, uh, um, that Rust slaps because Rust accuses them of canvassing the bars because he can tell that they've been drinking, not really taking Rust and Marty's new case very seriously, helping them very seriously. Um, and so one of the first things that uh, really sticks out as to how Rust uh, stands out like a sore thumb with the rest of those cops because he's not a company guy. Uh, he's not part of the, the blue shield, if you will, in that he is kind of willing to go his own way, follow his own instincts and not accept party lines. So that's who Geraci is, tall guy with a mustache. Um, and then we have Rust being very, very, I think, honest when he says, uh, talking about Geraci, I've got uh, a battery and two jumper cables that say different. Uh, Rust is not above torturing someone to get to this information. Rust would not be above killing someone, except that, you know, if you kill someone, you don't get information. Um, this is just... It was driving Rust in the past, and it's driving him even harder now because he realized they didn't get the right guy. And that's the thing that forced him after however many years it's been, uh, eight, ten years, since he and Marty had that fight. That's why he decided to hook back up with Marty because he knew Marty had the contacts and stuff, but he had reached his dead end. After so many years, he needed more resources. He's burned his bridges at um, CID, and there's nothing more he can do. And Marty was his only link to being able to further investigation on this case. 
Um, so we are going to pick it up for the last part of True Detective. Holy cow, it's coming. The green-eared spaghetti monster shall be revealed. See you then. Bye-bye.